Welcome to the Solemn Vanguard channel. Today we are discussing why I am closing Claret Cards, my card shop. Now, first of all, quick announcement. The winner of the previous Zero Damage Gaming giveaway was Martin from Phoenix. So congratulations, you have been notified by email. Getting into the actual topic though. Firstly, if you are for some reason still waiting for an order because COVID can slow down some stuff. Yes, everyone will still be getting all of their orders that were made. Support will still be active. All of that is good until everyone is confirmed everything has arrived properly no more open cases or anything like that it will be properly operational so don't worry about that secondly I'd like to thank everyone who for the past more than a year actually has supported the store truly thank you I hope many people were able to build some amazing decks make some amazing memories with these cards however why am I closing it down? Now for the people who don't know, Claret Cards was my online store where I sold Vanguard cards. It was completely built on Vanguard. Yeah, we had like a couple Pokemon tins once, I think we did one Yu-Gi-Oh case. But in general, it was just a Vanguard store. When it was initially launched, the plan was to have another person actually helping me out. As you know, I have other companies as well and these require more time because they're more complex. Having a card shop, okay, it can be stressful, but it's not all that complex business model wise or product wise or anything like that. So I was gonna have someone else helping me out and then that didn't happen. Now the past months, my actual main company, Solemn Tones, has been doing so damn well that I have been pushing all my attention there. And so the big issue was that Claret Cards still existed. Every release time we did, I don't know, like Butterfly, we did eight cases. Actually opening eight cases is a lot of work, but then you still have to sort them into bundles and do the sales, make the emails, talk to customers, upload all the pictures, like all of the, there's so much crap that goes into getting all these cards out the door and packed and shipped and all of that. Just assume that every single release I had one week of work to just get it all done. So that is 25% of my time put into Claret cards. Now without going into specific numbers, there are days where Solemn Tones does as much profit in a single day as Claret cards would do in two months. If you then consider that I spend 25% of my time on Claret cards, you start thinking, wow, you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> and yeah, I guess I was. And so for the longest time, it was just worth it because I love Vanguard that much. And I still do, but Solemn Tones has just been scaling in many ways. And so now I figured, you know what, fuck it. I cannot keep on opening cards and selling these cards and sometimes for like two bucks having to go into the storage and looking for a common to fulfill an order. When Solemn Tones is just working at this entirely different scale, it just doesn't work. And like Claret cards did fine. We weren't losing money at all. You know, we did our, depending on the release, four cases, eight cases, something like that. And we sold out pretty reliably. Of course, with every release, we always undershot the amount we would have so no one would ever be refunded because we didn't have enough supply or anything like that but you know everything that we uploaded usually sold out so there was no issue as far as business goes it just literally was no longer worth my time so with that out of the way just the fact that solemn tones is doing so well i'm trying to grow it into even more than it already is i just had to divert my time like i can't keep on spending 25 percent of my life packing cards for the slightest margins when I could be growing an actual business. It's just not worth it. Which brings up an actual bigger topic. Why the fuck does selling cards suck so much ass? This is not a dig at anyone selling cards. It's more so talking about the actual business model and the problems that it has. I very often see on Facebook someone like, oh, this vendor is ripping me off. Oh, this seller, yeah, he's all in it for the money. If you are selling cards, and you are in it for the money, you're a big fucking idiot because there's places where you will be making so much more. Holy hell, this, this business sucks. And now this is not a sob story. Again, everything was fine. It's just not worth the time. But be very aware. Let's say you wanted to start a store tomorrow. What do you have to do? Well, first of all, you open a business because without some kind of business number, usually a distributor won't sell to you. Otherwise, everyone could just call up a distributor and say, yeah, your, your cases are cheaper than my locals, Lamau. It's not that easy. Usually you need some kind of LLC or in Belgium, it's called BVBA, something like that with a VAT number. Again, it could be slightly different in the US, but that's how it works here. So you get a registered business. That also means you need to do some accounting. You need to do your taxes and all of that, duh. So once you have that set up, that entire structure, with new credit cards, debit cards, your PayPal and all new for that business, 
you go to your distributor and you say, hey, I want to order cases. Now, the interesting thing is you have order deadlines. Generally, you need to buy cases up front, often without knowing what's going to be in them, but it depends on how much supply they really have. You order, let's say, the set that's coming six months down the line. Then you hope that those cases are good. Now, in the months leading up to that release, you generally want to start doing pre-orders. Now, why do pre-orders? Here's why. If you have cases that you break open, what's inside is not worth more than what you paid for after release. Generally, of course. Because generally, once people start cracking their sneak preview kits and their boxes at their store and they start selling everything online, all the prices collapse. And so when the prices collapse, it becomes very, very hard to be profitable on your cases. So you need to be making profits on your pre-orders. That's why everyone these days sells these clan bundles because that's the only way to have even the slightest bit of margin on your cases. So you start doing pre-orders. You just basically signed a contract, made an agreement with a distributor, hey, I'm gonna be buying all of these cases from you and now it's up to you to actually make profit before they're here. If you didn't do that, it's gonna be much harder to break even. So okay, you magically find your customers probably on Facebook and so forth. If you wanna be a little bit more sophisticated, maybe you have a YouTube channel, maybe you hire some YouTuber to promote your store, maybe some pro team that you say like, oh, all these pros are gonna tell everyone to buy from us. Whatever form of promotion you use, to sell those cases, then release rolls around. You get your cases, you start opening them all. Depending on how many cases you bought, that's gonna be a lot or little work. If you're selling on TCG player, you're likely gonna have a tough time breaking even because you're competing with everyone's prices. And then you get to shipping. You need to have all these shipping labels, you need to have all the ways to make sure that the cards don't get damaged, you need to have all these stop loaders, bubble wrap, whatever else you need. Okay, you start shipping, you start writing all these addresses or printing all these addresses. You do all of that, you have big boxes that you push into the postal office and you start shipping everything off you pay all of those shipping costs and cool now you hope that you were profitable now you could be you absolutely could be especially because I don't know if you know this but cases in the US are much cheaper than in Europe so whenever someone says like oh oh these European sellers are trying to rip everyone off no we are paying taxes high ones different ones it's also why the European market often gets destroyed by Asian countries because people from Singapore get their cases much cheaper but then come and promote their sales onto European groups. Now they're fine, they can do that. I quite frankly don't care. I had enough reach to sell despite that. But if you wanna be a vendor in Europe despite that, good fucking luck. And so you spend your hours upon hours opening these cases for slight profit margins. Maybe it's a hundred bucks per case, something like that. If you're very lucky, maybe it's 200. And then you just keep doing that. It gets your money up front by doing your pre-orders. And then you have to pay the distributor once you get your cases, you get profits again for the next one and next one. You keep doing that, but you have to ask yourself the question, when you used all of this time getting the cases, selling the pre-orders, opening them, maybe making a website, writing the addresses, shipping everything out, keeping all your stock tidy, like doing all that is necessary to run a proper business. And yes, you made profit, but given all the time you put in, are you making more than if you were to work at Starbucks? Very likely not. Now, this is not a dig at working at Starbucks at all. It's just that you're taking on so much more risk by breaking these cases than if you just applied for a regular job. You are making agreements that you will be paying thousands even if you fail. Now you could say, oh, but I, I can just declare bankruptcy. Sure, you can, but then you're still gonna have trouble with credit down the line and all of this complex stuff that I don't wanna talk about right now. But so you're taking on so much more risk, the risk of doing business essentially, for barely making more than just a regular job that doesn't require a crazy degree. Now, what is the solution? You could say, oh, so I can't make money in cases. Well, you can, you absolutely can. What you need is scale. You need to get to a point where you do so many cases that all those slight profit margins start adding up. So if you are vendoring cases and you're only doing four cases, you're just wasting your time. Now you can use that time to scale up. At the beginning, you're not gonna sell hundreds of cases, obviously. But if your plan is to continuously keep selling four cases, you're gonna be in trouble because you're essentially doing so much work for what? 400 to $800 of profit? And that probably doesn't even cover overhead. Can you imagine if you have a physical store? You also need to rent a place, keep the lights on, pay employees, wow, good fucking luck. So you need scale. You need to get to a point where you can say, oh yeah, 
we'll do 50 cases of every set. That is how you make trading card games profitable. But again, then you need to start hiring employees. You can't open and ship out 50 cases of product every month, personally, like you, you can't. Unless you want to make everyone unhappy by saying, oh yeah, you'll get your stuff three months late. <laughs> Let's not do that. So it is a very, very tough business model. So when you say like, oh, this vendor is just in it for the money, that vendor is either very stupid or they're really not. <laughs> and they're just trying to cover some costs. So yeah, I mean, this isn't supposed to be a rant. Like I was plenty happy running Claret cards. It's just not feasible to keep doing it in the future. I'm also pretty happy that I stopped at Butterfly. Butterfly was a really solid set, a really cool set. And then we had Aeon. Aeon was like the worst set for vendors ever. Like, have you seen Aeon prices? Can you imagine you paid, well, let's say 700 euros for cases? Yeah, European cases are expensive. 700, like what's, what's that? Is it $850, $900 for cases? Can you imagine you spent that and then you see splits being sold for 40 bucks? When people sell their mega colony split for 60 bucks, people call them a ripoff. <laughs> Holy fucking shit. You understand you only get one split out of a case, right? With like a little bit extra. So if you start counting up, like someone goes like, oh, the Lourdes split is 200 and the Spikes is 50, the Mega Colony is 40 and the Tachi is 30. Yeah, count that all together and you get, whoo, half, half your case price, is that right? That set sucked. I am happy I dodged that bullet. So yeah, Cloud Cards did not do that one. We just straight up, scooped and, and now we're quitting, essentially. I'm perfectly happy with that. Solemn Tones is doing great. I'm gonna put all my time into Solemn Tones. So yeah, I'm happy, but I still wanted to update you. Hopefully maybe taught you something. If you're interested in more of these businessy talks, I do plenty of them on the Solemn Yu-Gi-Oh channel. Of course it is mostly focused on Yu-Gi-Oh, but we're doing plenty of businessy markety stuff. I'll put a link for that in the description. Claret Cards is basically done. Once again, thank you for everyone who has supported. If you still are waiting for an order, because I think I think four people had some issues with COVID total. Be aware, there, there's a lot of customers, so four still being issued, you know. But yeah, so anyone who still had anything late will still take care of everything. But after that, Cloud Card is done. That is all. Like, subscribe. Hope you found it interesting. And I will see you soon. Ciao.